Hello, hello, hello. I'd like to draw a character we love with you. We know and love Elmer. I, I have many of his books, and he always has such a wonderful spirit about himself. He's always happy. He spreads joy and laughter wherever he goes. He's curious. He's adventurous. Elmer is just a fun guy. So let's draw Elmer together. have my crayons ready. I love crayons. They're my favorite. You guys probably already know that. Yes, I love, love, love crayons. Okay, so in drawing Elmer, we know that Elmer is a really big round fella, and I like to start with um, shapes. I like to use shapes when I draw. Um, so I'm going to do Elmer in a very um, simplified way. Okay, I'm going to draw um, an oval shape for the body of Elmer. It's going to be big. It's going to come curve around like this. And I'm going to stop just about there. That's almost an oval. If I had kept going and connected, we would have an oval shape. Elmer has four legs. So I'm going to get started with that. And those are shaped almost like squares. So I'm going to do one. Yes, I just come down, across, and back up for one leg. All right, down, across, and back up for the second leg. Okay, let's do it again. I'm going to leave a space here, down, across, and up for the third leg. And remember, there's four, so let's do the fourth, down, across, and back up. He has a tiny little tail, so I'm going to make like a little triangle shape there for the tail. All right, let's do Elmer's head. Now, I'm just going to have to use different kinds of lines for this head because it's not a circle, it's not an oval, it's sort of attached to the body, but it curves out and it curves down. And his trunk is like the letter J, so I'm going to come down and back up like the letter J. Yes. I'm going to make sure that I finish the trunk so I make a line that comes out to the side and then I'm going to come down and go back up. It's getting wider because it's his trunk. Yes. Doesn't that look like the letter J? <laughs> it does a little bit. Yes, it does. I'm going to make a curved line here and then I'll make a little line down for the bottom lip and then it comes back up and connects with the rest of the body. And Elmer's got his big, wide open, curious eye with a circle and a smaller circle inside. I like to leave a little shine on it, so I did. Okay, and we're looking at the side of Elmer so we can see one of his ears Make a line that curves up, almost the same curve as his body, and then make a line that leans down, and then goes up just a little bit for Elmer's ear. There, there's an extra line right there. Okay, Elmer is a patchwork elephant who lives in the jungle. I'm going to, if you have room, and I'm going to make a tree here behind Elmer. Elmer is walking through the jungle, but I'm going to make a line that's right about here to show that he's walking on the ground. It's going to continue over here and past here and past there. And I'll make a tree right here in the background. Those jungle trees are very interesting looking. Um, there's one that has like a circle shape like this, and then it has like a zigzaggy line because the bark is very, very rough. So I'm going to make a zigzaggy line that comes down to the ground. And then there are lots of branches that curve up and away from this. Like that. And I'll use a bumpy line to show those palm leaves. So I just put a bumpy leaf, bumpy line for the leaf, bumpy line. 
I think I'll make up this one going the other direction because it sort of is. All right, and that's going to be my palm tree in the jungle. And yes, I'm going to add a big cloud here, a bumpy line. And I'm going to add another cloud here. Perfect. I don't always put suns in my pictures because when I look at the sky, I look at the clouds. I don't try to look at the sun. Much too bright, much too bright. Let's add some shapes on Elmer's body. It's patchwork, and so they're mostly like sheer square shapes. My tongue got twisted. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to make some straight lines coming down from top to bottom. I started in the middle because that just made sense to me. And there. So I have three lines. Let me keep going in this direction. Straight line down. Okay, this line is going to start here, but it's going to stop and come continue behind. Yes, behind the ear. I'm going to add a straight line here. I'm trying to space them evenly. I really am. And let's do one here. Try not to go too far over and into his eye. Now I'm going to do a line straight through his body down the middle. I'm going to stop by the ear and continue over here. Whew, that was close. I almost did the eye again. I'm going to make another line here that stops behind the eye and continues on this line. And very carefully here, all the way across. And over here. I'm going to make this smile line just a little bit darker so I can see it. And then on his legs, I'm going to do one line down and one line across on each of his legs. One down, one line down, one line across. Down and across. This one is down and across too, but it's kind of tilted because the leg is tilted in that direction. And I'm going to add the line that comes down to right about there, so I can do smaller squares here, and then just a few more here in the bottom of his trunk. And that's how I would do Elmer. Wait, his ear, his ear needs some colors too, so let me see, I'm going to make a line here, and do one across, and one up and down. I think I need to add some more. Yep, little squares, little shapes there. Okay, not too many. I didn't want to make too many. I just did a few lines going up and down, a few going left to right, and then you begin to color. Elmer was patchwork, where he was green and red and blue. No, oh, I already have green. And purple and orange and yellow and black and white. Oh, there was also pink. Pink. So when I start to color the co the squares on Elmer, I start by doing the outside of the square. And I'm going to do many pink ones. I'm not just going to do one and put it down. I'm going to do many of them. And so I'm going to outline them first so that I can remember where they are when I go back to color. I can see right where I want to, to color the pink ones. And I'm spreading them out. They're not all in the same row. Some are in the middle of his body, some are at the top of his body, some are on his feet, and some are on his trunk. So that's, an, that's a lot of pink. So then what I do is I go back and color in. And I, it's much easier to color in. That's a technique that I learned when I was younger to do the, to outline it first. So when you go to color in, it's just a lot easier and you don't have to worry so much about going outside of the lines, especially when you want to do neat work. So I've done pink. 
and I think I'll do red next. In fact, I'll put a red next to the pink. And I'm just going to do the outline for the red shapes I'm going to do. I'm going to put red on his ear. This part of his ear will be red. And so just like I did with the pink, I'm going to pick a lot of areas to where I want to put red. I'm going to choose a lot of places where I want to put, use red because there are a lot of them to be colored in. So I'm going to do this little outline technique. And when I've done that about six times, maybe I've done six already, I'm not sure. But I'm going to do many of them and then I'm going to stop and color them in. I'm going to do this for every color that I use. Voila. Now I color in with the red. And see how much quicker it goes? It's just, it's just a cool way to do it. It's like first I'm making the plan when I do the outlining of the shape. I just make the plan. And I'm planning where I'm going to place them. I'm not putting all of the red side by side. I'm spreading them out. I'm spreading them out. Elmer's starting to look really good, boys and girls. Yes, indeed. I think I'm going to do green next. Let me pause and I'll be back. Okay, the green is done. And while I had green in my hand, I went ahead and did the tree. Hmm, what color should be next? I'll grab purple. Purple is done. Now it's time for blue. Okay, now let's do yellow. And my yellow crayon has been really faithful. This little crayon can do some amazing things. Watch and see. Yellow is done. Now black. Okay, there are two le colors left, two colors left. Uh, this one is broken, it's the orange. <laughs> the orange is next, and then last is white, which doesn't need to be colored because the paper is white. So I'm going to add a few orange places on Elmer's body, and then leave some white. Because he had some of his patches on his body were white so we must leave some white he didn't have any brown on his body but I will be using brown for the tree let's see he needs more orange guys um, here let's do this one orange that's a big part of his belly right there. I'm going to make this part of the tree orange. And the bottom part is going to be brown. Takes a little concentration to color inside the lines here to make sure you get inside where those ziggity zaggity lines were drawn. Drawing is good for your eyes and your hands and your eye-hand coordination and especially coloring. Coloring is too. Because you really have to concentrate. Your eyes and your hands work together. Voila. Well, Elmer, you look handsome. You look wonderful. And later I'll go back. I'll add color to the sky. I'll put some green grass there. But yes, a character we love. Elmer. His books are by David McKee. Totally love Elmer the Elephant. What a wonderful character and what a wonderful experience it was to share this with you. I hope you'll come back and draw more cool stuff with me. Have more fun making art. Art makes you smart. I love it and I'll see you again soon. Bye.